today we're going to talk about background vocals um, and, and some lead vocals. I'll, I'm, I'm, I want to show you some techniques that uh, that we couldn't find a slot for uh, earlier in the uh, in the course. There's a million ways to do vocals, and um, I can't speak for everybody else, but for me, um, vocals were one of the last things that I actually was able to feel confident about. Uh, they 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 there's so many things going on in a vocal. If you think about it, usually, a, 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 like say a drum, a kick drum or a snare drum, it's gonna loosely be the same at the beginning of the song as it is in the end of the song. Notice I said loosely, but the EQs that you start in one place can probably do you pretty good for 85% of the song, but vocals aren't like that. Uh, they, they change from whispery and soft to just full on, Christina Aguilera volume and, and 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 some singers as they increase volume they get a little more one and a half to two K in their voice, which 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 is a good thing because it makes you feel like they're singing louder. So it's vocals are a very dynamic thing and, and, and a lot of times you have to automate a lot of parts of the process. You can't just have a static EQ or static compression. You might want to automate the compression, the threshold. Um, sometimes I have just I'll get a track of of lead vocals and and I'll divide it up into three basic sections and so I'll 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 take that one track and create three tracks out of it. So I'll have my soft parts in one track, I'll have my my regular parts in another track and then my my loud uh, kind of sounds in track uh in a third spot. So don't don't be afraid to to take advantage of what the digital world has to offer. Um, the analog world, uh, when, when I did Christina before digital, I used to have her vocals split out over eight faders and each fader had a different sound and was, um, I would, I'd mix it like a keyboard, just, just sit there and I, I had everything memorized with my, my eight fingers and, and I'd pull this fader, up, these two faders up or this fader up or this one, or that one and combinations of the two, depending on how she was singing. It's so much easier today. Now, what I wanted to show you today was um, something that you might not have thought about before. Background vocals. Um, I love harmonies. I'm a sucker for harmonies. I love, love, love harmonies. Now, what I try to do, let's say I've got uh, four notes, maybe four, four tracks of each. I'll, I'll, I'll experiment by trying to put the lower notes towards the middle, the higher notes towards the outside of the mix. I never get too close to the middle because that's where we're going to sit the lead vocal, um, and then and then I try to I try to arrange the parts so that it sounds like a chord to me. It sounds like sounds like a piano. Sometimes on a piano you hear four notes the same, and that 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 impression is what I like. I like that that harmony that's all together and, you, and not one note stands out above another. So experiment with compression on the individual notes until you get them where you want. Now dynamics are your friend. It's okay for things to kind of pop out here and there. That's, that's, that's what we call music. Another thing that I like to do that a lot of people don't think about is I use a technique called MS, which stands for middle and side. It's an old technique. Um, when I first started engineering, I thought I invented MS. I went to the studio and told uh, my boss, "Hey, man, I invented this new thing." And, and he said, "Well, Dave, that's kind of kind of cool, but uh, you didn't invent that. That's, that's been around since the '40s. So um, there you go." But this technique, we're going to use it. Um, basically, it's a miking technique that we've modified in the digital domain to do without microphones in, in the in the analog domain. Look it up. It's basically taking a cardioid, putting uh, Combining that with a figure eight, you take one side of the figure eight, you put it out of phase, and you got a you got a really cool thing. In mono, it ends up being a big cardioid, and in uh, stereo, it gives you this nice width. Now we've got a background part, so let me play you the background. Closer, closer, though we're still so far. We're still so far. We're still so far. And I believed in us. I... Uh, this is an artist named uh, Magdalena gifted artist. She's doing all the parts. Um, now, what I want to do is, is I want to clear out a spot in the middle for the lead vocal to sit in. Now, um, you're not seeing, you're, you're, here's the lead vocal, you're not seeing the backgrounds. 
an, an easy way is to take the plugin called Center. Now, Center, let me be real clear, it's not an MS plugin, but what it does is, is even cooler sometimes. So here's without it. Closer, closer, though we're still so far. Now here's, watch, watch, watch the middle go away, but the sides get enhanced. Closer, closer, though we're still so far. I got a little too much high end on the sides. You know what? I'm going to take the high end a little bit off the side. You know, in a perfect world, I'd, I'd take some of that high frequency information out because I don't want it competing. Um, I don't want it competing with the rest of the... Um, with the rest of the with the lead vocals so, so let's take some high frequency out closer closer though we're still so far we're still so far we're still so far and never closer closer though we're still so far we're still so far we're still so closer closer though we're still so far somewhere in there i like okay so now um let's set our lead vocal in that mix and see what we've got So, so you see, it's set in a beautiful spot, right? Uh, let's let's do an A B. So. Now it sounded to you like the uh, like the lead vocal got louder, but it didn't get louder. We just took the competition out of the middle where the lead vocal sits. Admit it, that was pretty cool, right? Okay. Um, now let's try it with um, um, with just uh, the taking out some EQ. So so what I've done is I've put this plug in, which is one of my favorites into mid side mode, like, like you can put it into uh, left, right mode. Now, uh, depending on what I do here. So, so on the middle, I'm doing this EQ, um, taking out some 1.4, it looks like. And then on the side mode, uh, this is, you can see what I'm doing here. So let's try it with just this. Now this is just EQ, watch. Okay, now let's, let's listen to just what we're doing. You see how the middle came back? Now this is a little more subtle. Combined with this, you can, it's optional, you can use you can use either one of these or both. Now, this technique will also work for guitars. It'll also work for, sometimes I do this technique on the, uh, on the aux that I have all my music on. So I, I keep, I, I use five or six auxes. I have I have a I have one or two vocal auxes. Here I have two just so, so that I can help you a little bit. Sometimes I'll put the backs on an aux by themselves. Um, now these are these are aux that dump into my stereo bus, the red ones. And then and then I'll have a drum aux so I can take my drums and dial them back in the chorus in the verse a little bit, kick them up in the chorus, and then maybe as the song progresses, I'll I'll put each chorus a little louder with the drums. And then sometimes I'll add a little more mid-range to the drums when in the choruses to make them feel a little, a little louder. And then I have a music aux. And the music aux is great because I'm telling you, it's frightening how many times you'll think you got the mix just perfect. And you'll go, you know what, let me lower the music. 
and oh man, the mix will come alive. Or sometimes you go, let me just raise the music and the mix will come alive. So it's a good way to quickly tell what you've got. Uh, I'll put the bass on an aux. If it's a track, like a rock track, I'll put guitars on an aux. And, um, and then I put my effects on an aux. I'm gonna show you why in a minute. Um, let's try something with the effects aux. This is just my effects. Now, you can tell that there's a lot going on in the middle. So this is one of my favorite MS plugins. It's a lot of damn knobs, and I'm not sure what a lot of these on the bottom even do, but my buddy Matthew Lane does, and we've got some great presets that my other buddy Dylan, D Dylan Dresdo came up with. So watch the middle go away. So let's, let's, let's put our lead vocal into that mix and see what we got. <laughs> no one believed in okay, now let's try it without it. No one believed in So that gives you an option. Um, now I'm, I'm a real quick um, um, show you some techniques on the lead vocal. Here's here's the de-esser that I used on this on this vocal. It's uh this one of the the underdogs. Everybody thinks, oh man, it's just just the old stock gray waves, but you'd be surprised the number of people that use this. No one believed in I think you all the time. Listen to the word time. I think you all the time. Now listen to how silky it sounds. I think you all the time. Yeah, yeah, that little compressor did that. And then uh, sometimes I take the mid range out with this with this guy. It's just easier to find. So I'll I'll do this. No. You'll find a lot of times the problem frequency repeats in octaves. So, so we're at two. We'd, we'd want to look at one K and four K. But now watch, watch. This is a compressor. It's a side chain one. No one believed in No one believed in It's just a beautiful thing. I'm telling you, it's just a beautiful thing. So easy to do. This is something you might not have thought about. Um, this kind of we talked about it earlier um, in the, in the course, but I want to show you again uh, what this does. No one believed in No one believed in We got a little volume, but it helps with the dynamics. And then I use this. I'm showing you this because I use it a lot on vocals. One of the reasons I use it a lot is is this feature here. Watch. No one believed. Now, watch, I'm going to sweep the frequencies. No one believed in no. That frequency is bothering me, so let's, let's, let's. No one believed in no. No one believed in no. No one believed in no. Ooh. No one believed in no. So we can do, we can do similar things with EQ. These are helping you do it in a dynamic way. The EQ is helping you do it, do it in a static way. Um, got a little delay on it, a little bracasti. This is, I'm going to solo this for you. This is a slap. Uh, just, just a couple of, uh, somewhere around 70, 80 milliseconds, maybe, maybe between 80 and 120 milliseconds, and, and split the two sides a little different. Um, no one believed in no. No one believed in no. And so that'll help. That'll, that'll give you the impression of, of, a, of a doubler. All right? A lot of stuff.